I am a heterosexual male. I'm not gay. Amazing. I'm a homosexual. Don't clip this, guys. <laughs> okay. And I really wanted to be an Orthodox Christian again. And believe it or not, the priest denied me entrance. And they look at me and they say, Mother Mary must have brought you here. Man, it made me cringe. And I lost faith in my own faith. Now I have to study the enemy's book. I was looking for the devil. I'm going to find the devil. I'm going to debunk the Quran. Or they see me as a traitor. Because to this very day, my father still doesn't talk to me. Only monotheism then makes sense. And so now, as I said, everybody in my family is Orthodox Christian, but nobody did the work. They simply accepted it as their identity without truly understanding what it entails. They didn't understand what it means to be Orthodox Christian. What does it mean? What does it mean? Jesus died for your sins. You have to worship the Trinity, etc. They didn't know anything about it. Right? So I was the first one that actually researched the religion. So I read the whole Bible and I had more questions than before. So I went, as I said, to Mount Athos. Mount Athos is an island in Greece and it hasn't been changed for the past 1,020 years roughly. It's an amazing place, historically speaking. For over a thousand years, only men are allowed on that island. What? And monks, only men are allowed on that island, even the visitors. No woman has stepped foot on Mount Athos. There you have a bunch oh. of monasteries. And in Orthodox Christianity, it is a bit nationalistic, you have to understand. So that means you have a Bulgarian Orthodox Church, official body. You have a Romanian Orthodox Church. You have a Serbian Orthodox Church. You have a Russian Orthodox Church. Now they want to establish a Macedonian Orthodox Church as well. And you have a Greek Orthodox Church. So on Mount Athos, you have many monasteries that hold the liturgy in that specific language. It's not like Islam, where you just have Arabic. And it's uniform, no matter if I'm in Thailand in the mosque, or if I'm in Turkey, or if I'm in Germany, we're going to recite in Arabic. In Orthodox Christianity, you have different liturgies. So I went there, and I went to the Greek monastery, I went to the Romanian one, to the Russian one. I really wanted to understand. I really wanted to understand what Orthodoxy is about. But every time I would ask those people there, they couldn't give me a proper answer. And I was wondering, how can that be? It was very mysterious, it was very beautiful, but it was not concise, it was not precise. And so there was this one night where I wanted to find a place to sleep and I didn't take into account that I needed, needed a specific visa because Mount Athos, even though it belongs to Greece, is still an autonomous region, similar to the Vatican. Okay. And most people spoke Greek over there and they kind of discarded me as the foreigner. They were very rude, I have to say, which kind of put me off a little bit. <laughs> but I said to myself, well, you know what? It is a challenge from God, so I'm going to accept it and I'm going to go and find a place to stay. I've been told that there are wolves as well on Mount Athos and I was going through the forest, through the mountains, alone. On a road? Sun. No, no, no. No road, man. Just through the valleys, through the mountains, oh, hiking. Bro, it was crazy because then the sun started setting, it started raining, and I still had no place to stay. So I said to myself, okay, man, so I'm probably going to get eaten here, you know? <laughs> Whatever. I trust God. I put all my faith in God, and this is why I'm here. I believed. And so I kept on traveling, kept on traveling, kept on traveling, until I found one monastery, a Serbian one. Hilandar is the name. And I was so happy, man, and I went in there, and believe it or not, the priest denied me entrance. The priest said, sorry, man, we cannot accept you. You don't have the visa. And I said, bro, I have to sleep outside here somewhere. You know, even if you have a shed outside, I said to the monk, let me sleep somewhere. So said, sorry, sorry, we cannot do it. And so I was again kind of disappointed. But at the same time, I said, okay, this is a phenomenal test of God. I have to be here and I'm going to find a way. So I kept on journeying, kept on journeying. Now it's already dark. Now it's already nighttime. And I found a little fisher boat next to the ocean and I said I'm going to sleep in that boat and survive there you know but when I reached that boat next to it hidden behind the forest was another monastery and I rushed in there and the monks thank God accepted me but now check this out I was just so grateful to finally make it you know and I say to the monks 
man, thank you for taking me in. Thank you so much. You know, I'm such and such, etc. And they look at me and they say, Mother Mary must have brought you here. And I will never forget that because it just, man, it made me cringe. I said, how was it Mother Mary? You know, I survived this epic journey here. I was afraid of getting eaten by wolves. I was praying to God to lead me somewhere. He led me somewhere. I know that it was God. Why would it have been Mother Mary? But they insisted that it was Mother Mary, you know. And then spending time there, I realized that it was essentially a Mother Mary cult, in a way. Because this they were predominantly... Monastery? 100%. Not only the monastery, that whole island. Because I found out that oh. they dedicated that island to Mother Mary. Very contradictory, because they say... This is Mother Mary's island, and therefore no other woman is allowed to step foot here. Whatever. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Anyway, so ultimately I saw that the Orthodox Christian, and this is the core of Orthodox Christianity. This is the birthing place, ultimately. This is in Greece. As far as we know, the New Testament has been written in Greek, right? We only have the Greek manuscripts. So this is the birthplace, the origin of Christianity. And those guys are worshipping Mother Mary, and when they are not worshipping Mother Mary, then they're worshipping Jesus, right? And then when they're not worshipping Jesus, then they're singing hymns. And I was just wondering, okay, where is God in the equation? For me, it was clear that this whole spiritual pursuit ultimately needs to lead you to God. And I didn't find it there. They were talking about everything but God. How does that make sense? Even though I felt the presence of God in my own pilgrimage, in my own journey, I didn't find it within the church, in their doctrine, in their theology. And so many people, when they leave Mount Athos, they feel as if they've been to Mecca, ultimately, from an Orthodox Christian perspective. Okay. But for me, it was just, okay, now I'm even more crushed because this simply doesn't make any sense. And this is when I spiraled further and further down and I lost faith in my own faith. And I said to myself, okay, now I have to study the enemy's book because when I understand the enemy, then I will be so much secure, more secure in my own faith and I will be the better Christian. I will be the best possible Christian once I understand the enemy. You know that maybe from teachings of martial arts and war, keep your friends close but your enemy closer. Yes. Right? In order to understand. Thanks. I was like, this is exactly what I have to do. Yeah, exactly. The art of war. And so I said to myself, okay, this is the way and this is what I have to do. So I opened up the Quran finally, alhamdulillah. And after a few pages already, I realized, okay, this is definitely not what I was looking for because I was looking for the devil in that book. This was really my premise. I'm going to find the devil. I'm going to debunk the Quran. That was, that was what you, your goal was, not to like... That was really my goal. Yeah. Wow. It, was not, it was not saying, hey, listen, Orthodox Christianity doesn't work, so therefore let's see what Islam has to offer. No, it was, okay, Orthodox Christianity, something is not right here. Let me see how we can fix this by attacking the enemy. Somehow this made sense to me. Right now, looking back, it's kind of ridiculous, but this whole Allah led me, so I'm very, very grateful for it anyways. And so after reading a few pages, ultimately, I already saw what the Quran is about, because you read it yourself, right? And I think that the Quran, even if you just have a couple of surahs, Surah Ikhlas, for example, essentially tells you everything you need to know about Islam. I really believe so. This is the core of the religion. Which right? one? Say Allah. Surah Ikhlas. Which, which number is that? You know? I don't know which number it is, to be honest. But yeah, we can look it up one second. Surah Al Ikhlas. Say, He is Allah, one and indivisible. Allah, the sustainer, needed by all. He has never had offspring, nor was he born. And there is no one comparable to him. That is Surah Ikhlas, right? And for me, honestly, this is how you can sum up Islam. Add Al-Fatiha to it as well, the opening, yeah. and then you basically understand the religion. It's not yeah. that complicated. And this is why I always find it so funny, you know, when Christians go into, yeah, oh, well, the Uthmanic manuscript and this and that. And Man, the message in the Quran is very, very clear. It is even repetitive. It is, Just to yes. remind you over and over and over again. But every surah entails essentially Islam which is worship the creator and not the creation. Right? Yep. But anyways, so this is what I saw within the Quran. And I was still battling, but I couldn't find it because it was so obviously true. 
Because as I mentioned, what is religion, what is spirituality, if it is not the pursuit of connecting to God? Because you can logically essentially deconstruct this whole thought pattern and say, is there a creator to the creation? If I accept that premise, because it is a logical premise, of course, everything has a creator in that sense, then what does this creator want from me and how do I get the closest to him? So if I add partners to him, then I'm a bit detached from him, of course. If I need a priest that I confess my sins to, then I'm already a bit detached. When I add certain saints that I pray to, then I'm again a bit detached. When I add a bunch of idols on top of that, then of course it gets even further deluded. So what we really want is to get as close to God as possible. So only monotheism then makes sense. And once I realize that Islam is the only truly monotheistic faith, it just clicked. That's it. What else can I be looking for? Right? I was looking for monotheism. I was looking for a close connection to my God. That's it. Truth. Oh no, I'm saying I'm one. Like, that's what I was looking oh, yes. for. Yes, yeah. exactly one. And it is really not that complicated ultimately, but for me it was because of my baggage, because of my history, because of my cultural upbringing. I had everything to lose, Grayson. I had everything to lose, you know, because to this very day, my father still doesn't talk to me. To this oh, very really? day. Yeah, yeah, already. And listen, I'm not an emotional guy or anything like that, you know. I'm not saying that to evoke pity or sadness or anything. I'm just saying this, I'm stating this factually so people understand. My father, as an Orthodox Christian, he sees Islam as the enemy as well. And therefore, when I accepted Islam, he just hung up the phone and we haven't talked ever since. With my mother, I didn't talk for almost a year, same with my sister. And now slowly we are re-establishing the contact. The majority of my family in Macedonia doesn't talk to me either anymore. They see me as a traitor. And many of my uncles and cousins, they said they don't want to welcome me in their house anymore. Right? So therefore, this wasn't an easy decision to make whatsoever. I had everything to lose, essentially. And again, for people that think I did it because of clicks or something like that, guys, you can do AI videos and generate more clicks, you know? So you can do raindrops for sleep meditation and whatnot, and you will get your money. It's not my main motivation. Otherwise, I wouldn't have called the channel Bobby's Perspective to begin with. You know, it was authentically just sharing my journey with all the ups and downs and just putting myself out there, you know? But anyhow, all of that being said, I couldn't deny it anymore. I couldn't deny the truth of Islam. And it even went so far that I went back to Macedonia and I went back to the Orthodox Church and I really wanted to be an Orthodox Christian again. But when I was in the church on the Balkan and the priest which we had to address as father, even though the Bible says you should, you should call no man father. He was preaching about, do you believe and do you worship the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in Macedonian, of course. And I simply internally said, no, no, I don't. I don't worship those three persons. I am a Muslim. I'm a believer. I knew that then. And that's why I had to accept Islam. It was absolutely non-negotiable essentially with my conscience because I got it and that's what Islam is about once you get the message why not accept it because the Shahada is only a declaration of faith and I said that on my channel as well you are already a Muslim before you take the Shahada what do I mean by that in order to speak to utter those words you already have to have it in your heart so for example Grayson I'm assuming here are you a heterosexual male, Grayson? Yes. Are you? Can you repeat after me? I am a heterosexual male. I am a heterosexual male. I'm not gay. Amazing. Amazing. Not gay even on top of that. So if I would like you now to recite, I'm a homosexual. Don't clip this, guys. <laughs> you, wouldn't, you wouldn't be able to say this with conviction, right? So it would be an act. It would be something put on. You would be pretending. Because it is not within you, it is not who you are. And so therefore a Muslim, as you already know, is somebody that submits his will to God. So if you are that already, if you, if you have this belief, then you simply declare it. That's all. It's not into, about into changing into something. It is not about becoming something else. It is simply about declaring what you already are. That's it. That is the Shahada. And I'm not saying this here because I want to force a Shahada upon you. 
for everybody watching. I had that now in the past week. People are reaching out to me. Hey, talk to Grayson, talk to Grayson. Sure, that's what I'm here for. I think it's entertaining for the audience. I hope so, inshallah. But I'm not in the Shahada business. I genuinely wish the best for everybody. I'm a revert myself. And most people that I know are not Muslim. If somebody wants to accept Islam, Alhamdulillah, his win. If he doesn't want to, I say his loss. No worries. You know, but I'm not here to convince anybody. I'm not here to pressure anybody whatsoever. I'm just here to share my perspective. That's why I call the channel Bobby's Perspective and my journey. Interesting. Yeah, okay. That's about it. Okay. Yeah. Wow. Well, yeah, I'm, I... not, I'm not a Dawah guy. I'm not no. a Dawah guy. Mm. I really want to make that clear. Yeah. I mean, hearing your story is definitely relatable. Thank you for sharing, like, the details of it. All right, guys, but this is it for today's video. If you liked it, leave the thumbs up, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Check out the links in the description box below to further support my work. Thank you very much for that. And as always, guys, may God bless you all. Much love and peace. <laughs>